Hello! So I'm doing uh, this video a little bit differently than in the past. Uh, I usually don't like to say anything that will indicate what day or year uh, or time it is because I usually plan on using these videos one more time in the future before updating them. But uh, we've got some unusual circumstances going on. Uh, if you're watching this now, it's probably two weeks from now, because I usually shoot these uh, a little bit in advance. So here I am on my back deck. Uh, it is St. Patrick's Day, which is why I'm wearing green. But I did not put any Kahlua in my coffee. I thought about it, but I did not. Um, kegs and eggs won't be happening this morning. Uh, but uh, as you know from the uh, pandemic that's going on right now, we are telecommuting and all of the seated classes have been put online and this class is already online so it runs as usual, but I'm not supposed to be in my office. So I'm on my back deck. So welcome to my back deck. And uh, we're going to be talking about goals of organizations briefly. Uh, one of the reasons I'm on my back deck, and please excuse the, the noise this morning, uh, we've got some birds chirping, is because I have a four-year-old. That's one of the reasons we're on the back deck. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old that will probably end up making appearances in future videos because I won't be, be able to avoid it. Uh, so, But for right now, it's just me and my dog, Lucy. I have a black lab named Lucy. Come here, Lucy. Come here. You can't get up into the shot, can you? There we go. See? Say hi, Lucy. Aww. She says hi. Um, uh, that looks good, I think. Anyway, uh, so uh, Lucy and I are going to talk about goals of organizations. So, one of the issues with public organizations, and, and a lot of the material from this class actually applies to private organizations too, but one of the issues with public organizations is that the goals are often vague and uh, uh, just really unclear compared to um, private sector firms. So, uh, you know, the, the goals of the goals of the police department, for example, um, are uh, uh, to limit crime, but also to uh, uh, prevent crime, so and ensure fairness among citizens. And uh, how we measure those things is difficult compared to private firms, which you know, like if you think about if you think about uh, the auto industry, Toyota, Ford. But private industry has much clearer goals. Their, they, their goal is to uh, make profit, and in the case of manufacturing, it's to uh, make more cars. Make more cars, sell more cars. Pretty, pretty easy to measure those goals, pretty clear. We make more cars, we sell more cars, we're doing a better job. Uh, public organizations have a tougher time with this. So... Uh, not only are the goals sometimes vague, but they're also can be, uh, but they can also be contradictory too. So conservation agencies uh, receive pressures to both conserve natural resources and to develop them. Uh, prison commissioners uh, face pressure to both punish offenders and rehabilitate them. So it, it's interesting uh, if you think about how our prison system works. We. Uh, uh, we have these pressures that we're supposed to punish people. Three strikes, you're out. Uh, uh, you're going to be in prison for a very long time. We need to have strict penalties on these offenses. And, and these people don't deserve uh, uh, some kind of second chance or rehabilitation. But at the same time, once they've done their time, 20, 30 years in prison, we expect them to assimilate back into society and be re rehabilitated and not be criminals anymore. Kind of contradictory that, that, uh, that the system is set up to punish, but then uh, we've cut funding 
in prisons to things like uh, uh, books, like li uh, access to libraries and um, uh, to allow prisoners to, to read. And that's because we want to punish them. Well, why should they, why should they have access to uh, uh, a, a large number of books that they can read in their, in their free time? Um, they, they need to be punished. They should be doing nothing but hard labor or something, picking up trash on the side of the road. Uh, but if we give them access to education while they're in prison, you can argue that that might help rehabilitate them so that when they come back into society, they're assimilated. Um, so we have contradictory we have contradictory goals in our public organizations. And as I mentioned before, police officers especially need to find a balance between keeping the peace, enforcing the law, controlling crime, uh, preventing crime, ensuring fairness for citizens, and operating efficiently at minimal cost. So you're trying to save the taxpayer dollar, dollars, but you're all, you also have these conflicting goals. And how do you um, how do you manage those conflicting goals? So we think of police officers culturally as uh, fighting crimes, but they actually do so much more than that. Uh, they're, they're street level bureaucrats. They do a lot of paperwork and they also, uh, they're conflict managers. They, no. they don't, uh, 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 they don't fight crime as much as they control conflicts among, among people. They, they, uh, uh, they're called out for domestic violence disputes or noise complaints in college towns, especially. Um, uh, in my college days, I may or may not have had the police called on our apartment several times for noise complaints. Keep it down. Uh, you know, in that case, they're not fighting crime, they're keeping the peace. So uh, uh, one of the issues with unclear goals of, of uh, public managers, that so, so actually I want to talk about one more. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, actually, this, I can work it into the next thing. So one of the problems with unclear goals of, of public managers is that uh, uh, public organizations have a difficulty measuring whether they're achieving those goals. And so, uh, how should we measure police officers' success? Is that by the number of tickets they write? Not really. I mean, we'd rather people not be speeding than measure success by how many tickets are, writ are written for, for speeding. Uh, firefighters. Fire, uh, firefighters, fire, um, uh, fire departments. We measure their success based on how many fires they put out? Well, that's that's only one part of their job. They, they show up uh, in a lot of other circumstances, and we'd rather there be no fires. So fire prevention is important. So when you have, um, uh, when you have uh, fairs and the fire department shows up to teach kids about fire safety, they're trying to prevent your, your eight-year-old from lighting the carpet on fire. That's success too, but it's hard to measure. So we don't measure firefighter success, uh, uh, the success of a fire department, based on how many fires they put out, uh, because it's also about fire prevention. But they're also emergency management teams. So my father was a uh, volunteer firefighter for almost 20 years. And in, a, in small towns especially, there aren't a whole lot of fires to fight. Uh, most of what they show up at is car accidents. Um, and and clean up after car accidents and working with um, working with uh, uh, officials to um, uh, to keep people safe in car accidents. So uh, so that in that case, your 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 fire departments aren't aren't fighting fires, just like uh, your um, your police officers aren't fighting crime. It's not that it's not part of their job. It certainly is, and it's not that they aren't in danger. Of course they are, uh, uh, but there's just so much more to their job than putting out fires and fighting crime than, uh, uh, than the public usually thinks when it comes to these professions. So then how do you measure, how do you measure what their success is? Look at what's going on right now with, uh, with uh, uh, coronavirus or COVID-19. The um, the, the CDC 
how do you measure the success of the CDC? Well, uh, in a normal year, you might think, well, you know, levels of heart disease are down or uh, something like that. But now we're trying to control a pandemic. Uh, uh, we're taking some really drastic measures, especially in some states, to control a, control a pandemic. So how do you measure success? Uh, how do you measure success after this? How do you decide, like, oh, the CDC is doing a good job? Uh, uh, are outcomes from, uh, from the coronavirus better or worse than other countries, maybe? But then in the future, if there's just no coronavirus outbreak or if there's no similar pandemic outbreak, uh, is that considered a success? Um, some of that's not within the CDC's control, and they have to be reactionary. So uh, there's just... There's just a lot of moving parts when it comes to public organizations, and the goals are unclear, and measuring those goals can be very difficult, and it's, it's not as clear as the private sector, where, uh, where your goals are going to be more profit-based, uh, and your goals are going to be more clear because you have uh, very specific goals as an organization. Ford, make and sell cars. Uh, Toyota, make cars. Your factory might make widgets. McDonald's measures success by how many hamburgers they sell. What are their profit mar margins? So, uh, so that's a little bit about goals of organizations and, and how unclear they can be and ambiguous. And uh, uh, I have posted some other things uh, that that go over uh, 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 concepts from your reading. So besides the reading, there are also a couple of uh, extra videos that, uh, that cover um, a couple of the different things that are uh, covered in the Goals of Public Organizations chapter. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and then there's also a discussion board on performance management uh, measures in, uh, with kind of a case study of uh, New York education uh, measures. So. Thank you, and uh, sorry about the background noise. Uh, I hope you all are staying safe, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.